we're starting the day here in Venus, Nebraska, and it's a truly authentic ghost town. What you can see behind me, uh, there's a building that has crumbled, and there's another one even a little bit right kind of behind my head you can see there. And uh, Venus had a post office for quite a while. I think these buildings probably fairly recently crumbled, and the earth is gradually taking them back now. Um, and, and it was, you know, a, a, a place that had... Um, some big gatherings uh, reportedly there was a fourth of july gathering in the something like 1920s they had thousands and thousands of people that came here um, just down the street there's a church in another building so we'll go down there and take a look at that maybe it's a quarter of a mile to half a mile down the street and it's called i think it's called a venus church um, but you know there's there's really obviously there's no one living here and I'm not sure what these buildings were, whether they were houses or maybe a general store or a post office or something like that. So, um, but it's a very, very beautiful part of Nebraska. Uh, dirt roads for miles to get out here and a pretty cool place to stop along and check out why you still can. So I wasn't quite sure what this building is, but I think it's a school. Um, they've got the coat racks on there, um, which is kind of interesting. That you got the church on one side of the street, the school here, some maybe general store, and uh, homes down the way here in Venus. Welcome to Wee Town. <laughs> you gotta love a place that has a sense of humor about how big it is, and that's probably why it was named Wee Town. And I don't think it was ever actually a town. Um, from from what I have found online, it was mainly this stop right here. This is 81 uh, Highway 81, and so this was one of the main roads in Nebraska for a long time. And so you could have a uh, a stop for gas or convenience or a restaurant or something like that. And in the, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, it would have been a convenient place. Then when the interstates started getting built, roads like this um, weren't as busy. Although it's, it's a pretty busy road today. There's cars passing all the time. And we're only about six or seven miles from Pierce, Nebraska. And so that's kind of the nearest town to here. Uh, from from uh, what I read online, one of the great stories about this place one, it was never more than a couple of houses, and so maybe 10 or 15 people. Back back then, you know, two houses could be 15 people. And people would come here, and they would, they would uh, project a movie onto the wall of the building, and people from the community would come out here and sit and watch movies at night. But there's still signs of Wee Town. The, the letters across are missing the W, but, but pretty cool and probably some fun times were had by all at Wee Town.
Most people, when they hear Ames, they might think of Iowa, but there's actually an Ames, Nebraska as well. It's right on uh, US 30, which is kind of the uh, you know east to west historic road uh, that goes from New Jersey to Oregon. I actually, spent, I actually spent a lot of time on it this summer when I was on the Oregon Trail. Uh, I followed it for quite a bit, especially through Nebraska, kind of the last half of Nebraska. But there's a lot of great little towns along the way, and Ames was one of them. It's now unincorporated, basically a ghost town. There's a couple houses, but there are some cool things to see. It was a railroad town, started in the 1880s. It, it had its name changed to that of a railroad official, and that's how they tried to attract the railroad to some of these places they would name uh, something after the official and the Union Pacific Railroad is what what this one was um, and so it was I, I don't know much else about the history of it but there is some things to see here